Welcome everybody, my name's Ryan and this is The Game Show Guy. We got a new game for you today. Super fun, exciting game that requires some props, folks. We're playing ourselves a game called Change That Card. Hi everybody, yeah, Ryan, the game show guy is here. Hey, I'm doing something different for this one. Uh, you just saw me in the classroom and, and now I'm over here. So this video is gonna be a little bit of back and forth jump in between, uh, unlike what I've done with my previous videos where I've just shown you behind the scenes, the game setup and talk about gameplay. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna go back and forth. You're gonna see me in the classroom playing with the students a little bit and then me back here on the other end describing the setup or the gameplay kind of thing. Hopefully you give you a better idea about how this is gonna be played. Like all my games, you can see here on my first slide, I put it on all of them, which is the feel free to change it wherever you want. Um, this is basically just an idea of how to be able to do it. Um, there's one main part of the gameplay. Keep that, but change the rest. Change the numbers. I always love the uh, what's the whose line is it anyway uh, improv game is that uh, uh, we make it all up and the points don't matter. So um have fun with it, do whatever you want. So with that being said, uh, uh, two main things to be able to focus on here. First off is you're going to need absolutely, you have to have cards. You could have a standard deck of cards that you could be able to play, but it's kind of small. My recommendation is you invest a little bit and you go by yourself like you just saw here, some of these big old things. These are giant novelty cards. I love giant novelty things. Novelty uh, dice and coins and cards. I find them all super, super fun. You're going to need a deck of cards. I will tell you this. These are, I think, about like 11 by 14. These are actually almost slightly too big. Um, um, because they're relatively, they're so large that they can find themselves tipping over and falling and a little bit unwieldy for my student helper uh, kind of a thing. Um, and the second thing is this, if you could just focus, which is the, you're going to hear me talk about po uh, the dollar amounts and how many points or whatever it is and how many this goes and hey, if this is a high card round, in essence, focus on the idea of if a kid gets a question right, they get a guess if the next card is going to be higher or lower than this. If it's if they guess right, congratulations. They get they win some points. And if they don't, they lose and they, the next people get to play. That's kind of how I took this. This is the classic 80s game, uh, uh, Card Sharks. I took that idea and say, hey, how can I be able to modify that, keep that same gameplay? And the reason why casinos, uh, people love going is because it is a game of chance. It is, you like playing poker and all that sort of stuff because the cards are going to get you. It doesn't matter if you think you're sitting on an ace and the ace is high and it's going to be low. Well, it could be another ace and we always lose on ties and you're like, oh boy. So it's, it's a lot of fun. You don't even need to, don't stack the deck, just shuffle the cards and, and let them, and let them be. Um, uh, along with the cards, you're going to need to be able to have a place like you can see behind me here where we're going to play. I like to use the whiteboard where the racers, um, uh, and the pens get a sit, clean all those off so I can stack mine. Again, change it how you wish. I like to be able to do five cards for a team. So that will be one, two, three, four, five cards in a row. And then when it, uh, one of the, uh, the teams wins, they get a chance to turn over one of the cards and then go try to be able to guess up and down and that sort of stuff. So you're going to need some space to be able to, to put those. Um, and also that'll determine on how many teams that you're going to have play. If you only got a small amount of space and your cards don't fit, you may want to break it up and only have two teams play. Um, the version that you're going to see is me having three. Three is always my go-to for a class. That gives me a class average of about 30 kids. It gives me about 10, 10 kids to play with the number of questions that I have. Usually allows for kids to be able to play two to three times. If kids don't want to play, I'd let them uh, sit back and that's fine. So it allows a little bit of both um, and such. So um, feel free to find out whatever what will work for you. If you don't have a large um, whiteboard like this, feel free to use a windowsill or even the worst case scenario, you can put them on the ground, push the desks out and create a space like that. So get creative with that. Okay, so in essence, that's it. Let me show you a little bit about now how the game's gonna be played. <laughs> Hey there, so you saw with the introduction of the game, we're going to need to be able to get three players from the three teams to be able to uh, come and be able to stand up. I've created a series of questions that you're going to be able to see into the template, which that you ask the students a question, and I play of those three, whoever the first person to be able to raise their hand or chime in will have the first opportunity to guess. So the question that you're going to see here, I say here, uh, you can see in a basketball game, how many players all together are on the court. Um, I've put on the bottom 
uh, four options. If you f if you don't want to turn this into a multiple choice, you can just delete all of those if you would like, um, and have it just be a fill in the, you know, you you pull a name out of the out of, out of the air kind of a thing. Um, the way the game is animated is this: is that you can see I have this ace of spades. To simply indicate to the students what the correct answer is, you just move this. So let's say if I wanted to have the correct answer there, if I move it there, the animation has a sound effect and it will appear to tell the students where the right answer is. You just use your clicker to be able to go to the next one. You just, the, the, you know, your, uh, the, the clicker is one of the most important tools that you're going to use for uh, these kind of game shows. So let me show you what it looks like here in, um, when we put it into the game. <coughs> question comes up, hey, in an NBA basketball game, how many players uh, are on the court at the same time? Then you click it and, and the answer comes up. Okay, let me walk you through basically how the the cards work in this. I have, for every team, I have five of them set up in a row. Like I mentioned, I got, if I have three teams, I'm going to have five, so 15 all together. Um, and basically that uh, once the student gets a question correct, the first person who answers, they're going to have a chance to play this row. Come on over, man. What team are you? Team number three. Here's your cards. You got a six. Six. Kind of low. Still kind of medium-ish. Ish. Oh, king. Fantastic card. Lower than a king. Ten. Don't you want to be? Don't you want to be safe? Lower. You sure? Don't do it yet. Hold on. I'm gonna to try to talk her out of this. Okay. Think about it. Think about the math where you're at. It's a close game. The next person can take over. You're gonna gamble. Lower than a ten and eight. No, you can't. You can't do this now. You're at an eight. It's a bad card. Lower than an eight. A two runs the table. Oh, that's how the game's done. And the way that I have my points here, you can see, is that if they get a question correct, they're going to get two points or $2. Um, and then if they can anticipate the next card, if they guess higher or lower, they're going to get an extra, uh, an extra dollar. If they can get all the way to the end at any time, they can pause. We'll call that freezing later. But sooner or later, when they get to the end, they're going to get an additional $7 for that. So let me jump back over here and show you what it looks like in this um the row. So the first student be able to play, the first card turned over is a two. They have the ability, once you answer the question, at the beginning of the question, the first time that you answer the question, if you don't like your card, if it's one of the middle ones, and the middle ones are sevens and eights, you can change the card. Kids often won't want to change the card at any time, but I have to clarify to them that you only can change the card directly after you answer the question. Once you start guessing, you're, you're stuck. You have to guess um, not change the card, or you can freeze when you get into the middle. So let's say the kid's going to be able to guess and say, oh, I'm going to go higher. Then we flip that card over and the card becomes a queen. Next, the team could be able to tell them higher or lower how to be able to guess again. They're going to go, okay, let me go lower. So they've guessed correctly. So now going back to our math over here, we can see they got $2 for the question. Then they guessed once right for one uh, for one being higher and again for another one being uh lower so they got two three four dollars this is why having somebody on the scoreboard sure can help and have another person doing the um flipping the cards over having two helpers is really really kind of essential on this now when they get to this spot this is the worst card in the deck if they guess and they say, um, I'm going to go higher, and the card becomes a four. Then what happens is they're going to lose all of those. Your first card is a seven. Now, since you just answered it correctly, you can change that card or play it. Change that. He wants to change that card. The new card off the top of the deck is an ace. Aces are high. Go lower. The only thing that can hurt him if it's an ace again. Three. Great card. I'll go high. Higher than a three. Ten. Lower. You're gambling? Oh. You're go. Oh. oh, loses the progress. Oh. Some people, you may want to freeze. What the per what your helper is going to do is ultimately get rid of every single one of those cards. And so uh, even this one too, you have to go back to the very beginning. And so you want to tell them if you risk it, you'll always get, be able to keep all your points, but you're going to lose your progression to be able to get to, to finish that completes. So what you may want to do then is when you get to that seven, you may want to say freeze. When you get to the point of saying freeze, what I would do is I would have my, um, I'm just going to do this in PowerPoint here, but up on the whiteboard, what I would do is I would have my, uh, have your helper draw like an arrow, a line. So that's the spot where we have frozen. Then 
if whenever the next time this team gets control, they're able to say, I, I want to change that card. You could put a new card on top of that one. Let's say it's a, a king and they can say, okay, lower than a king, right? And then you go and go play from there. So that's, that's the ability to be able to change the card. Once they run that hole to get to get to the very end, then they get seven. Once all those seven are gone, you take those off and put in a new uh, set of uh, five cards. So here's the interesting thing about this game. There's no end. Um, there's not like a set number of things that you need to be able to get to. You just play for either a length of time or a certain number of questions. The number of questions is probably the easiest. Um, um, and if you can run out of questions, you can then be able to say, if kids are still left on the path, you can say, hey, we're just going to uh, play play the rest of the round out uh, of the cards and see how they can ultimately finish. But it's a nice one that there isn't necessarily a beginning and an end. One thing that you do want to have is a fair amount of questions. I have several of these uh, on my site that uh, take a game like Jeopardy. There's a set number. There's a grid, and you want to get to them all. Other ones, they're just questions to be able to help you along, you know, and such. And so um, – um, this is a great example of that one. So you just have a bank of questions. I recommend um, uh, having a bunch of uh, uh, fun questions like the ones that I have here, you know, basketball to food questions to, you know, geography questions, what's the largest state uh, and such and fun ones, you know, what is Patrick from SpongeBob, things like that and make it applicable to your age group or subject or, you know, just something that it is um, um um, that, that they're able to do. Uh, I'll tell you this, that um, when I played with, uh, with kids is that you do want to be able to, here's the hard part about writing questions. You want to find that sweet spot, not the Goldilocks of too hard of questions or too easy of questions. So it's super fast. There want to be some challenge in there and such. So um, uh, finding the kind of questions. So like take a question like here, here's a pop question. Because I make it a multiple choice question, nobody really knows the answer. Maybe a few kids would. What's Lady Gaga's real name? I give them a hint. It starts with an S and I give them four random choices. So then kids are kind of thinking about it. So have a couple randoms in there. I usually like to mix it up, have some multiple choice and some sort of just name that kind of question such or whatever. And that's the essence of the game. You're going higher and lower. You'll see sometimes the kids... You, it's fun to be able to find the gamblers, the kid that's just going to say, I'm going to go all the way through. I'm just going to be able to keep pushing through and he's making risks. And even though his teams are telling him to freeze, freeze, freeze and all that, um, you do have to explain the freeze concept to them a little bit, how it kind of works. I'll say this, like any game, uh, they'll have zero background knowledge on it. So the more times that you play that, uh, you play the game, that the better that they're going to be able to understand understand the game. Uh, the, the, the extra part of the game is every fifth question, I have one of these Um this is called a high card question. Basically, I'm, we're not playing with all those, the cards up on the board. I pull a separate, uh, uh, a separate pile of cards out and I, I have the three kids all stand up and I say, Hey, just everybody pull, pull the card out. And whoever has the highest one gets their first opportunity at guessing the first question. This is all animated. So the only one that they were going to see is the groundhog day question. Now, one kid has a king, they get to go first, then an eight and a four. Um, if the king doesn't get it, then the eight has an opportunity to get it, and then a four has an opportunity to be able to guess that. And that is, in essence, the thing. You, If you want, you can be able to sort of create some, hey, by the way, if you did um, – the person who gets the eight and the four, if you want to risk it and try to be able to beat the other person to try to be able to beat that king and draw another card from the deck, you're more than willing to do that. If you lose and you don't, then – you don't have an opportunity in case the the first kid fails. If the kid has, if the first the person who won is an ace, a king, a queen, and I wouldn't really risk it. But if it's like, hey, someone had a two and a four and a nine, if I'm that two, I may risk it, you know, to see if I can get higher from that, or just disregard that and just do, hey, the highest goes first, and the second goes second, and the third goes third, and such. Kind of a fun little mix up uh, uh, on that one. I like to theme the questions, by the way, when I do these. So, like you can see here, I did these all holiday things. I did Groundhog Day. Fourth of July and Thanksgiving kind of questions and and such and so um, that is an essence of the game. You keep playing, like I said, there is no end of the game. You just keep going and going and going until you have, um, you know, uh, the uh, these ones here. Um, I try to put enough of them, uh, the questions in there. If there's not enough. Just copy and paste. If you really want to do a really, really long one, I think that I got a fair amount of questions in here. I think I, I think we go to like slide forty three or whatever. But um, 
feel free to just copy and paste the ones that you need. There is no, there's no importance of linking. Like, I, like in Jeopardy, you got to go from vocab to 200 and back. None of that uh, matters. The only thing that really applies in this is that uh, ace. When you click on the animation, that comes up. Besides that, you can copy and paste to your heart's delight. Don't like the high cards, delete those and get rid of them and kind of a thing. So as you can see, um, uh, the game's fun. Um, and as usual, try to be able to manage the, the the excitement and the funness of the game. One of the biggest things to be able to be aware of, though, is when you're introducing new games, if they struggle with the rules um, and directions, um, can they be engaged? So one of those things that you kind of want to be able to explain it, but also if, you, if I keep explaining too much, I'm going to bore them. So you want to explain a little bit and then just jump into the game and kind of see how it evolves um, over time. And they're going to learn the process because in the end, the essence, it is not, it's not a hard game. It's the, is the next card higher than a four? What do you think? Is it higher than a four? It's a four and you lose on ties. They always freak out about losing on ties and you'll always have one kid go, what if I guess it's it's the same card? I'm like, go for that. If you really want to try to guess the next card is going to be the same one, you go for it. Anyway, the cards will be a lot of fun. This game's called Change That Card. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Ryan, and this is The Game Show Guy. <laughs>